Well, and so it goes. So we're coming out the front door here. And we're going to take a little walk around down to the road and to the old house and back. Who's the we? Ain't me and the snake in my pocket. It's Nika the brave wonder dog here. Come on, brave Nika. Try not to knock me down here. I'm an old man. This is our Kia Sorrento. It's lifeblood of our property. The house you'll get to see on the way back. There's my new truck. It needs some brakes on it. And we're coming off the hill the house is on. And we're going to hit a flat spot here a little bit. And away we go. So, we, as you can see, we've got trees. We are in here on mountains, so we've got a lot of ups and downs and not much flat. But it ain't a bad place to live, especially in a mild winter like this one. We don't have all that much snow. Only got about a foot. Normally, by this time of the winter, we'd have, oh, waist-deep snow by now anyway. And these walks wouldn't be happening so much because it'd be just brutal cold. Now, if we go around this way, back up that hill, there's the house. That's the hill we just come halfway down. There's a little dugout for, push out for more snow to go into. And if you go over that way far enough, you come to the road. But you ain't going that way this time of year. And brave dog Nika seems to have taken off and headed for a place where she can smell something. Now, people talk about living off-grid. Well, this is kind of off-grid. Probably heard the generator in the background. That's because solar up here is pretty much worthless this time of year. There is up in the top of that tree there, a windmill. And <coughs> it don't work because my predecessor put that tree windmill up in the tree. Well, that's a grand idea except the trees grow. And so now the windmill don't turn. So that's kind of not very useful. And someday when we can afford it, we'll rent a cherry picker and get some brave young likely lad to get up there and get that windmill out and see if it still works or not. Now we're finally down off the hill that the house is on. We're making strides to the road. And there's the back way to the back bedroom of the old house. But we have a few more stops to make first. Well, so far, you might say you haven't seen much except trees. Well, that's because that's pretty much what's here. This open space here, in the summertime, there'll be big row of blackberries all along here. You think you can see them where they are. 
behind that, there's a big patch of sweet grass. And then there's some other medicinals growing back there that are wild. Mullion and uh, St. John's wort. A lot of that. And my wife's the herbalist, so she knows more about that than I do. But here we're coming to a little clearing. We'll get over to this later on. That little house over there is my first shed. And there's the front of the old house. More about that later. Over here are these trees from there all the way around here up to the road is my sugar bush and we got about oh 50 or 60 trees we can tap in there at least in theory whether we can tap them or not depends on the snow level if it stays like it is, well, I can get in there and tap. But it's like usual, and it's six, seven feet deep. Uh, at this point, I can buy syrup in the store cheaper than I can hiring somebody to haul me out of a snowbank. And... Sound like somebody bought a hound dog. And here we come up to our driveway, start of our driveway. And Dog and I take this walk every morning, or almost every morning. And limber me up a little. Go all the way out here to the road. And you go down there about 16 miles, and you get to the highway to town. And if you go up that way, about 16 miles, you'll get to the road to the mine. And there's a big nickel mine, the only nickel mine in the United States is up the road from us. Goodness gracious. Well, now we'll walk down past the sugar bush here. There's some kind of vehicle coming up the road. Let's stop and see what it is. Sounds like a logging truck. Nope. Just a pickup truck. Somebody hauling plywood. We got a lot of logging going on on this road, and I was kind of hoping you'd see a logging truck, but oh, later on this year, when the snow melts, I'll show you where our fire pond was supposed to be, and being that we're Eight miles from the nearest power. Uh, you're supposed to have a fire pond, but that don't work so good up here. Uh, uh, land is all sand and granite. And 
One rule says you have to have a fire pond. The other one says you can't put a liner in. So that ain't going to work no matter how you cut it. And you want to live off grid. These are the things you have to put up with. Oh, let's climb over this hump here. And that little truck there, friend asked if he could leave it there while he went and got some parts. Well, evidently, he went a long damn way because that was three years ago. But it ain't hurt nothing, so let us sit there. He'll come back and get it one of these days. And, oops. We'll go over here by the first shed and take a look around. So we're here at the first shed. Used to have my forge here. That's where it used to stand. But my apprentice there, he didn't like working outside in the winter. So he moved it under an overhang in the house. But this is my first shed. That's my flushing beam there. A bucket of mink boards and uh, get off of me, damn thing. A uh, fox board or coyote stretcher or whatever. There's a skinning gambrel. There's a chair where I can take a good rest. Some iron. From the forge, for the forge, some coal, and a little box trap, and a bunch of tools from when we had the forge here. Move. Go on with you. Dog's been running all day, and now when we get out in the woods, she wants to hide under my feet. Come on, we're going that way. Something back there? Huh? Well, normally she'd be running around like crazy, so now she's sticking real close to me, so makes me think maybe something's around there. What's she looking at, huh? What's she looking at, girl? There we go. Pays attention to, it pays you to mind your dog or horse or whatever you got. Animals generally will clue you when something's around it shouldn't be. Or something they ain't used to. Boy, the snow here is deep. And now we're getting down by the old house. Beautiful old log house, but the corners are all rotted out. So one of these days we'll come down here and it'll be in a big pile. <coughs> My wife and her late husband lived here and Raised their two kids here. What? You want to go inside, huh? <coughs> well, all right. There you go. Ain't going to sleep much in here because it's dark.
Well, we lived here the second year that we stayed up here. And because our new house didn't have any heat. Well, the longer I lived here, the more certain I was this didn't have any heat either. But it did have a bathroom in there and a kitchen there. But we let some boy stay in there and uh, he didn't kind of made a mess of things and left. And that just was the living room. There's two bedrooms upstairs. Come on. And wandering through here. Ain't squat except there's a dog wandering under my feet. You can't really see it here, but there's a nice wood stove there. Come on, Tard. And we gotta go in and out every door here. That, that's part of our routine. There we go, back out in the sunshine. Come on, dog. You going or not? Now, some people wonder what you do for a toilet if you ain't got plumbing. Right there is your answer. Put a five gallon bucket there, build a little frame around it, get your roll of toilet paper, and you get your big bag of peat moss. Every time you use that pot, put in a handful of peat moss, just enough to cover up what you've done. And I'll guarantee you that ain't gonna stink. It won't stink in your house. And it's good composting. And oh, you're gonna die if you use that for compost. I'll tell you. No, you won't. I did it for 15 years before I met my wife that I'm married to now. And obviously, I ain't dead yet. Uh, well, this here's my forge. And. Nice little coal forge. And we got some hammers and tools. And a, holy crap, a neon lantern. Somebody must have been here and left something. Uh, and black object there. Looks like some projects in progress. But starting the back wall of that forge all the way down the end of the house was our woodshed. And these two doors opened up, open up into the house. So you stack that full of wood. Nice little cupboard there. You stack that full of wood. You don't have to keep going outside to get wood during the night. Here, get out of here. Anyway, we use three fills of this thing the winter we stayed here. And uh, we had about a month where it stayed below 20 below zero. And that's cold even for here. So now we're back in the house again. And the other house. Whoops. Come on, get out. This is my wife's old craft room. And that couple we let stay here, they kind of left garbage all over the place. And there's... My wife and her late husband's bedroom and the bed from hell. I'll tell you a story about that bed one of these days. 
And Bob used to make some greeting catchers. and He'd make all sorts of odd dream catchers. And, uh, they're pretty interesting. I make some great dream catchers, but they're simple. But he'd do all sorts of layers of dream catchers. This bedroom has a door to the outside. Oh, goodness, dog. And this is where I take my break. Come on, get out of the way. Get, 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 get. She likes to be underfoot. And for some reason, today she's not running around playing and chasing and whatever. She's just watching off there to the woods. Makes me think there might be something oh, over there that's dangerous. Now I know there is because she's hiding behind me. I don't see nothing. If she ain't happy about something, or she wouldn't be plugged up here right next to me. The snow's too deep for me to go wandering around to see how what it is. Hang on just a second.